and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about using inverse functions. All right, what is an inverse function? Well, an inverse function is a function that changes or interchanges the input and the output values of the original function. That means that the x values now become the y, and the y values become the x values. So if I had an equation y is equal to 3x, I simply interchange the x and the y values. I get x is equal to 3y. And typically, I'm going to solve in terms of y. So I get y is equal to x divided by 3 as my inverse function of the function y is equal to 3x. The graph of an inverse function is a reflection of the graph of the original relation over the y is equal to x axis. So here's my y is equal to x axis. If I were to create a reflection, let's say I have a point here, my reflection over the uh, y is equal to x-axis, which simply interchange the x and y coordinates. And I'd end up with this dot here. If I were to draw a reflection of this line, then my reflection would be this line over the y is equal to x-axis. So I have some symmetry as I reflect a graph over the y is equal to x-axis to show the inverse function. So I have one function here, and my inverse function is reflected uh, in on the right-hand side of the bottom right hand side of the y is equal to x axis. Okay, now I could also have a function right, that starts on the right hand side of the y is equal to x axis. So the inverse again would just be simply a reflection over the y is equal to x axis. Okay, inverse functions in practice. <clears throat> so let's talk about uh, functions f and g. So I have f of x and g of x. And I know that they're going to be inverses of each other. So, uh, which means g of x is an inverse of f of x and f of x is an inverse of g of x. If I can take a composite function which says that f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. All right, so if I figure out what the composite function is and it equals x, then I know that these two functions are going to be inverses of each other. If I don't come out with a result of x for either one of these, then I know that these functions are not inverses of each other. f of x might be a, an inverse of g of x, but g of x might not be an inverse of f of x. Okay. Uh, the inverse of a function f of x is denoted as, as f to the negative 1. Uh, and I know that might be confusing because we just dealt with uh, exponents, negative exponents. But what we're uh, saying in math now, when I have f of negative 1, that just means the inverse of the function f of x. g of uh, negative 1 is the inverse of the function g of x. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to determine whether inverses are functions or not. And so we're going to step back uh, a couple chapters and we're going to talk about what a function is first. Uh, and then we're going to talk about inverses of functions. So a function um, is an equation that has uh, only one output or y value for every input or x value. So we go back to the Coke analogy. Remember, I have my Coke machine and I have four different buttons. In a function, I can only have one output or one type of Coke for every button. So if I press the button here on the left, I can only get out Coke. I can't get out Coke and Dr. Pepper, otherwise it would not be a function. On the right-hand button, I can only get out, let's say, Sprite. I can't get out Sprite and Coke at the same time. So if I have two outputs for every one input, then it's not a function. But I, need, but I can have the same output for two different inputs, right? So I can have Coke for this button and Coke for this button. Two different buttons two outputs, but the outputs can be the same for the two separate uh, Coke buttons. As long as they're Coke or as long as they're the same output, then I have a function. All right, so the way to test that uh, graphically is to use a vertical line test. And the vertical line test will tell us whether or not there are two outputs for any given input. So I draw my vertical line here through this parabola, and I can see that this line, this vertical line, never touches the parabola in more than one spot. So I know then that this particular parabola is a function itself because for every x value, I only have one y value. Now the y value might be the same in two different spots for two different inputs, but I don't have two outputs for one given input. And the vertical line test will tell us that. All right, so let's talk about inverses of functions. Actually, the, we'll talk about again the test for regular function is a vertical line test. And we'll go to, so you can use a vertical line test to determine if an equation is a function by drawing the vertical line through the graph. If the line intersects the graph at one, more than one point, then it is not a function. So again, graphically, I have my parabola. 
I know that this parabola here is going to be a function. I use my vertical line test. I cannot touch more than one uh, part of the graph using my vertical line test, so I know it's a function. In this case, I use my vertical line test. I touch two points in the parabola, so I know that this function on the right is not a function. All right, so how do I tell if the inverse of a function is a function itself? Uh, so let's talk about uh, graphing inverses of functions. So I have my graph here of this function, and I'm going to reflect that function over the y is equal to x-axis to show you what the inverse of that function looks like. And as I do that, it ends up looking something like this. So I've shaded in a dark, darker uh, shade of red what the inverse of this original function looks like. Okay, so let's move on. Now I'm going to give you another graph. I have half of a parabola, okay, and I've drawn the other half, uh, the inverse of this half parabola, reflected over the y is equal to x-axis, looks something like this. Now if I were to draw a full parabola, and we know that a parabola is a function itself. If I have a full parabola, then I end up with a function that looks like this. So I'm just kind of rotating it onto its right side. Now I can say that the inverse of this red, darker red shade is going to be this uh, happy face parabola, the one that's uh, the regular shade of red. Um, and I know that in this case the regular shade of red is a function itself. So I'm going to say that this is a function, is a function. And this red or dark shaded uh, parabola is not a function. Okay, so the question is, is the inverse of this function a function itself? And I can see that it is not because I have, for given x uh, values, I have more than one y output. I have one here and I have one here, right? So the inverse of this function is not a function. Well, how do I figure out if the inverse of this function is a function? Instead of doing a vertical line test, I can do a horizontal line test. Because when I reflect this particular graph over the y is equal to x-axis, really I'm just kind of flipping it over on its side. So instead of using a vertical line test, I use a horizontal line test. Okay, so if I use a horizontal line test on this original parabola, I know the inverse of the function is not a function because it goes through this horizontal line, goes through two points on this particular parabola it goes through. Point here and a point here. So when I take the inverse of the function, I know that I will have two points uh, of intersection, so I know I do not have a function uh, itself. So let's go back to how to test to determine whether or not inverses are functions. Test for an inverse of a function, I can use a horizontal line test now, not the vertical line test, to determine if the inverse of a function is a function itself. All right, so in this case, is the inverse of this function a function itself? And the answer to that is no. I draw my horizontal line test. I know that the graph of this original function is going to look something like this. All right, we just drew it. And I know that when I use a vertical line test to determine truly whether or not that function is a function, I run into two lines. So I can use a horizontal line test of the function itself to determine if the inverse is a function, or I can use a vertical line test on the inverse function itself to determine if that inverse function is a function itself. And in both cases, I say no. Now, on the right-hand side, is the inverse of this function a function itself? I use my horizontal line test. I only go through only one point uh, as I move this horizontal line up or down. So I know the inverse of this function is a, a function itself. All right, so it might be a little confusing for you, but again, for a regular function, you just draw the vertical line to test if it's a function itself. If you want to find out if the inverse of that original function is a function itself, then use the horizontal line test. All right, that's it for math. Come and join us for a couple practice problems on inverse functions.